Yup. <clears throat> <clears throat> Whatever. What's up? Happy Aloha Friday. Welcome to the Explicit Aloha Podcast. This is uh, episode 2.37 already, so... Hmm. 37 plus 53. 90, rah. 90s is fucking yes. Um, not only not only is this episode 90, but I'm doing a little video of this one too, so hopefully this works out. Um, the video is going to be terrible. I'm, wa I'm watching it right now. It's horrible. But the, it, it's a video, so it's there. But happy Aloha Friday. Thanks for um, tuning in. So, last week's shows, happy birthday to brother J.P. Kennedy one more time. Um, it was his birthday on our, the night of our show, which was Friday last week. Seventh? <laughs> ninth? Seventh? Eighth? Ninth? Seventh? And um, he, you know, fucking raged and we raged. It was awesome though. We played the Reggae Rise Up Festival in Las Vegas and it was probably I don't know how many people were there. Was, I was guarantee a few, a few thousand and it was on the streets where there's two venues at that festival. There's the kind of the city block one that's like enclosed like it's it's walled off basically so it's it's outdoor but it's totally enclosed like huge though. Right, that's the downtown Las Vegas venue. But there's also the, it's a part of downtown Las Vegas. It's a separate stage and that's the one we played. It's a little smaller, but it's right in the fucking streets. Like, it's pretty sick. There's like, um, you know, street lights and shit changing and the signs for the streets and the names are right there. So it's pretty sick. And that was mean. Got a shout out everyone. I wanted to shout out our crew. Um, <clears throat> I, I didn't come prepared for this video thing, by the way, obviously, not at all. I'm, I'm only doing a video because uh, I had a fucking life-changing conversation with a friend of mine right before this, so, you know, I was just like, yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, fucking shout out to the crew. We got Noah on sound. Um, shout out to brother Matt on the lights. Fucking Eli was there taking some pictures, as always, killing it. Brother Rob, who is our tour manager, stage tech kind of guy, all around. And we also have Brother Justin, call of my own, who is our merch guy, but just kind of our all around Aloha guy. Um, whom, oh yeah, we had uh, Lucas Palmieri, who is a Revolutions monitor guy, but he was working with us, and fucking it's always a great thing to have. Lucas running our monitor. So shout out brother Lucas too. Uh who else? Oh yeah, Kimo and Ipo and King. King, yeah. All the all the family was, you know, got to see Eeps there and her her little her little nephew. <laughs> Fucking guy is so classic, bruh. Saf. He um not bragging, but he thinks he thinks the guitar playing Uncle Z is, is the coolest one, so um, 
he was, I have a picture, or she, she took a picture of him like acting like he's playing guitar and changing his pedals with his feet, you know, fucking sick. And um, that's it, yeah, I wanted to, I didn't want to leave it with on, so I wrote it down, I didn't, I didn't leave it down, I didn't leave it down. Yeah, <clears throat> they're racing outside. But yeah, how's this, uh, how's this uh, set up over here? Sorry, I keep, keep messing with my hair, cause didn't come prepare. Mess her hair, not prepare. Yeah, and, um, but yeah, that was awesome. So thank you to everyone in Vegas who was raging with us. That was a mean one. Gotta say, uh, probably one of our fucking better shows in a long time. Probably one of our best shows in a while. I don't know what it was. It was like the vibe. It was JP's birthday. And, you know, um, I don't know. It was just a mean, mean energy. It went, it went, went really well. And like, so like the thing about that one too is we didn't even have a sound check, you know, because we weren't the headliner of the night. We got to go watch the headliner, which was Stick Figure that night. And um, they crushed on the big stage. So we went and checked that out. And right, it was just, um, I think that the stage with the, there's something about the street lights and, and the signs of the, I'll fucking post a picture of it. There's something about that stage that was pretty sick, even though it was smaller. It was, it was like intimate, kind of small. It was big, but intimate, you know? Like me. I'm big, but intimate. Oh, man. Fuck, that's cringe, but that's cool. We'll keep it in. What else did I write down? Um, yeah, it was good to see everybody. Saw some musicians and... Uh, some fam, some family, you know, some friends. Mm, um, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was fucking, it was good. Went well. So, shout out to everyone in Vegas. And um, what else? We do have these shows coming up at the Blue Note at the end of the year. And I guess they're selling pretty well. So, if you guys are interested in coming out tonight, make sure you get the tickets situated soon. And if you're a friend of mine and you're planning on asking me for tickets, you better fucking hurry up because it's like, that shit, it, there's, there's six of us on stage with, with fat friends and family, you know, and the place is small. So please, please hurry up and ask. Um, and uh, what else, bruh? I finished Dahmer. I finished the Jeffrey Dahmer uh, TV show. And holy shit. I, you know. I was I was uh I was around for that, so I remember when he got arrested and all that shit and then fucking got murdered in jail. Um, but I went in and it's just God, it's fucking heavy shit. I don't know why I mean I'm just talking about it because it's like the kinda it's the kind of shit you watch and you're like, What the fuck? So it's kinda hard not to not to be thinking about it when I'm just talking on my podcast, you know. <laughs> but But anyway, yeah, so moving right along, um, yeah, we got those shows, so get your tickets if you can, um, as quick as possible for the Blue Note. That's going to be fun. It's New Year's Eve-ish. We're not doing New Year's Eve, we're doing all the days around it, so um, two shows a night, ten shows total from the 28th, I think it's on the 30th, off of the 31st, yeah. So 28th, 29th, and 30th of December. December and then January 1st, 2nd. That's it, bro. So fucking hurry up, ask. What else? Oh, it's, you know, usually usually not looking at something else while I'm, while I'm recording this crap. But, uh, um, another short one. I've been digging these short ones, you know. I hope you guys like it too. Um, oh, yeah. The family in Hanapepe, Kauai, who hooked up with Salt, their last name was Lawrence, so I wanted to thank them officially. Mele Lawrence, that is her name, that is their family. So I was looking, reading a little bit, you know, it's pretty cool. There's a, a there's a group of families who are like the ones who fucking handle it. And, right, that Salt is mental, right? You put it on anything and it's just incredible. Oh God. Um, it's like gold. 
Now, I can't help but say that and, and think that someone's going to be like, man, shut up about the fucking salt. Don't tell everybody. So, fuck. A, if you listen to this, shut up about the salt, okay? Don't tell anyone. And, um, <laughs> um, and so, this, this, like, I'm recording this to all, like, for two reasons. One, because, uh, I just wanted to put some shit on YouTube. And I was thinking of different ways to do it. And this conversation that I had with a friend of mine, Ola, who is uh, the owner and I believe creative director, if that's his title, I don't know, of Fitted. And he's a friend of mine and he, we, we go to the same jujitsu academy and our kids do also, which is fucking sick, you know. And like I said last time, I was reluctant to talk about even doing jujitsu because um, I didn't want to just talk about it. You know, being so new to it and just, um, you know, I just like it's a humbling thing. And so what I really wanted to do. Yeah, sorry about all the noise. There's a lot of noise. Um, but what I wanted to do was kind of, you know, do some kind of video for the podcast and but not have the recording. I was talking with Ola about it, and um, he just kind of, he fucking convinced me. He's like, hey, let's try the video. We'll see. So we'll see how this video thing works out. Um, it'll be out. If it's not out the same day as the podcast, it will be eventually. But the whole jujitsu thing. Um, he's also, you know, I trained with him, and he, I got to watch him get his brown belt up from his fucking purple belt, which was an amazing thing to see. Because he was already a friend of mine, and it's just a... Um, beautiful thing you know watching someone get that when you like so from my perspective is I just begun like I just started I have the date that we started you know my my kids and I in the middle of summer and so it's only been like literally three months almost and you know being being um I, I what, what I talked about with Ola was that when you're starting jujitsu it's such a it's such an incredible journey when you're fresh and you, you don't know shit, you know, which I, I don't know, sh I didn't know shit. I still, you know, obviously you're always learning, but I didn't come into it with a wrestling background or any kind of like, you know, I, I watched fucking UFC, that's it, you know, don't know anything. And, but, um, I just, uh, fuck, we, we, we got hooked, you know, our just like, listening and watching and um every all kinds of content about jujitsu pretty much is is what's on my phone nowadays and um my sons too we talk about it on the way to school and we'll watch things and listen to interviews and podcasts and all that stuff so it's just an amazing thing and i think um i wanted to not he you know so i think it's cool to talk about it um and I think the beneficial thing that at the end of this conversation that I had with Ola was that basically, you know, he kind of opened my eyes to the fact that there's so many people out there that are in the same position as I am. Like, there's a lot of you who are white belts who are in jujitsu and are just begun, have just begun, you know, or have been doing it for a while and are still, still a white belt or a blue belt or whatever it is. But if you, and even more so, if you're past that, you you know what it's like to begin. So. If just if you do it, you kind of have this um, understanding and this connection to to other people who who do it also, and um, that's one of the the beautiful things about it, you know. But um, it's it's just crazy when when you're starting it, and I think it's it might be cool to be able to like open up a little bit of a conversation, even if it's only with myself. Uh, on here and you guys are just listening but for those of you who do practice it too you know um you know i'm sure these same things will go through your head so i'm not gonna shy away as much as i i did originally um in talking about it because i think the journey of of you know everyone's is every everyone's is different it's another another point that um we had kind of discussed and so Anyway, I think uh, it's, you know, it's funny too when you when you get into something, it's like, you, I know for a fact that, that the people who don't do it and don't know someone close or have maybe a loved one who does jujitsu, 
they or you know you you're not gonna give a shit about what I talk about when it comes to that so you might not understand but maybe you do but those of you who do like well or if you just have like if your wife does it or if your husband or whoever it is you know you, your kids or something and you'll understand um, basically what I'm talking about because it's such an amazing amazing sport it's um Wow, it really is life changing, and I've only just begun, and we love to do it. We fucking love it. It's crazy. It's um, humbling, hundred um, percent good for your ego. I think humbling and uh, confidence building at the same exact time. So, um, you know, not only is it, you know, physically challenging and and straining, and you know it toughens you up and makes you you know gets you in better shape and all that all that stuff it's just mentally it's such a advantage to I think I think the goal of it is to be able to relax and still you know take on anything pretty much no matter how how uh, hard it is that's basically what it is and then slowly work your way through you know bit by bit get get your way through it to you know handle it and then get past it and then then be it you know that's kind of like what it is so fucking love it bro. um not gonna i'm not gonna my mom was like oh are you gonna end it every podcast with that saying that i said last time you know the uh, the jujitsu is out of the job i was like no i was just um it's just something funny but um yeah ola had a good one though he kept saying it during the conversation. I was like, "Bro, you have you have a saying. It's so funny. I was like, it's like a little little this little little clan we have." Um, his saying was jujitsu. That's why. <laughs> it's like I was. I called him to ask about an art question I had and um, and some podcast stuff. And you know, it's like he broke it down to basically jujitsu. So, hey, fuck. Suck on that, nah, if you don't like jujitsu, sorry. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> All right, anyway. Once again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna talk about jujitsu a little bit, you guys, and I'm probably gonna just save it for the end, all right? So if you're, if you're over it, fucking cut out five minutes before the end. If you're, if you're into it, that's fine with me, all right? Just, I love you guys, so I'll let you know. But if you wanna join this journey with me, and hopefully, um, you know, the YouTube will be going soon, or not whatever. Okay. Aloha. Talk to you guys later. Talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye. Shows.